Chapter 61 Leaders Lost and Found It was all right at first. It was nice to have Corbin back. Jimmy was happy. Oddie was out of his mind with worry, of course, but that was understandable. Freddy was confident that Lydia would find her way back to them, dragon or no dragon. But Oddie couldn't see it that way. Anyway, there was no point in Freddy trying to calm Oddie down. He was, what's the word? Inconsolable. The city guards had been awkward, but more annoying than dangerous. There had been loads of them. Every way they had turned, more guards had appeared. Jumping off the tower with Corbin had been scary for Freddy, but quite fun once it was all over. They had landed on the roofs, then dropped into the courtyard. What a relief it had been when they found the others were still there. Xander had clamoured to be out of Lydia's rucksack. The others had seen the dragon take Lydia, so they just got on with escaping from the city. It had seemed such a long way back down to the first set of gates, especially with soldiers leaping out and getting zapped every few metres. After they had left the city, the guards had got really annoying. The group realised they had come out of the eastern side of the city, where they had entered, and so were on the wrong bank of the river. They had needed to cross back and carry on toward the west. The team had followed the river down until they came to a bridge, then passed over to the other bank. All the time, soldiers kept turning up, needing to be stunned. Quinn had led the team on a short way to the south, then they had turned west again. They had taken shelter in barns and woods until they reached the forest. Once inside the forest, they had concealed themselves long enough to eat. They had carried on further into the forest until darkness fell. They made no fire and cast protective charms all around their camp. Then, of course, they talked. Can't go any deeper into the woods, Oddie said. We have to stay somewhere Lydia can find us. They were sitting on the ground, around one torch on its lowest setting. It was enough for them to see the others' faces, but little more than that. Ordi, Sander soothed, the forest is Lydia's domain. She'll have no problem finding us. The creatures here are her subjects, and they'll tell her where we are. If she can escape the dragon, Ordi fretted, the watcher's dragon. This is Lydia, though, Ordi, Freddy reminded him. She escaped from the Watcher himself, while she was unconscious, and then kicked his bum when she rescued me. She's losing her old magic the further we get from the gateway, Oddie persisted. True, said Corbin, but she has more of the high magic. She also has a wand, made by the greatest wand maker ever. Who's that? Christy asked. Who have I been staying with? Corbin prompted. Aye. Sandra said. Ambrose has prepared her the best he could, and, I believe, is watching over her. He's also battling the Watcher to keep him at bay. We're all very lucky that we could use magic, and not have the Watcher's creatures descend on us. This is Ambrose's campaign, after all, remember? He is involved. We'll do whatever he can for Lydia. Oddie sighed. We'll carry on into the forest in the morning. We'll have to rely on Lydia finding us, as Xander says. I think we should keep watches through the night, two at a time, in case someone's tracking us, or Lydia catches up. Is that okay with everyone? It won't be necessary, Oddie, Xander announced. I can keep guard all night, without risking falling asleep. You should get all the sleep you need. And he has a bit of experience with the city guards, Freddy added. Aye, well... Sander said. We won't go into that just now, Fresta, if you don't mind. Freddy grinned. So, Sander continued, I think you should all await your beds. It's been a tough day, and the next few days are not likely to get any easier. I know you won't all sleep straight away, but you should physically rest. He looked at Oddie. Oddie got up to go to the boy's tent. The others rose after him, even Quinn. Freddy sat up. There he was again, a wolf howling in the distance. They didn't have Lydia with them to keep them safe from wolves. He was not sure whether they could attack wolves, or if the wolves were on their side, or the watchers. He slipped out of his sleeping bag to go to look for Xander. The cat would know what to do. He grabbed his rucksack, 
in case he needed anything, and crept out of the tent. The moon was up, and he could see reasonably clearly. Did you hear them? Xander asked, appearing at his side. Wolves? Freddy asked. Aye, laddie, he confirmed. Big buggers as well, by the tone of them. Oh, yeah, Freddy said. I was forgetting you're into wolves now. I was impressed with one werewolf, Xander protested. That does not make me a wolf fancier. Hmm, some would say that's exactly what it makes you, said Dean, joining them. They're a few miles away still, Xander said, then corrected himself. OK, a few kilometres, if I must. But wolves can move at speed. You might be wise to wake the others. All right, said Freddy. Dean, you get the boys. I'll face the wrath of the girls. It was dark in the girls' tent, so Freddy took out his torch and put it on its lowest setting. Shona and Christy had zipped their sleeping bags together. Christy was spooning Shona. Freddy smiled and reluctantly woke them. Sander says we should get up, he told them. It's almost morning. He didn't want to worry them so soon after waking. He wondered what horror stories Dean was telling the boys. We should pack up the camp now that we're all up, Oddie said. Sander's detected wolves heading in our direction. If it came to a fight with them, we would have to use magic. And if that allows the Watcher to send agents against us, we need to be ready to move on. Yeah, this Watcher's not interested in us. Jimmy proposed. He didn't send anything after us in the city. I think he's only bothered about lids. You might be right, Jimmy, Oddie admitted. On the other hand, it's possible we got off lightly in Shakika because of the effort of sending a dragon for Lydia. Dragons are so powerfully magical, that may have been the limit of his ability. This time could be different. Oddie's right. We should play safe, Freddy added. Pack while we can. We don't want to run and have to leave stuff behind. Won't the protective charms keep us hidden? Christy asked. No, they're designed for muggles, Sander warned. Wolves go by scent, humans go by stupidity. The wolves would walk straight through. I'll go and keep a lookout. As if they come charging in, I cannot guarantee I'll be back before they arrive. You could whistle, Freddy suggested. What on earth makes you think I can whistle? Sander queried. Have you ever seen a whistling cat? I've never seen a talking cat until I met you, Zans, Freddy reminded him. I will, Sander grumbled. This is different. It's all about the lips. Take it from me, I cannot whistle. Not even a lavender, Dean teased. As Oddie so frequently needs to say, Sander retorted. Shut up, Dean. Focus, people, Oddie called through gritted teeth. Let's pack up. Jimmy, can you and Dean stand at opposite ends of the camp with your wands drawn? In case we're attacked, please. Sander leapt away into the trees. The others packed the tents while Dean and Jimmy stood guard. Minutes later, Sander scurried back into the former camp. They're hidden this way, he hissed. I think they picked up your scent. They changed direction, and they're not out for a stroll. Form a circle, wands out, Oddie ordered. They stood in circle, almost shoulder to shoulder, their wands raised before them. Freddy had a strange feeling, a glow of happiness at the approach of the wolves. He couldn't understand it, so he accepted it. Nobody fire until we know they're attacking, he called out. Seriously? Corbin questioned. I've got a feeling we shouldn't start a fight, he explained. Why do you think they're after us? Corbin asked. Not coming to check our passports. Freddy's right, said Xander in support. They may not be hunting us. It's odd. They were running before they caught our scent. Maybe the watcher sent them, Shona suggested. Shh, we'll know soon enough, Oddie warned. They waited. The night sounds of the forest had turned to silence. Should have built a fire, Shona whispered. City guards, though. Oddie reminded her. The undergrowth rustled. Here they come, Jimmy murmured. Dark shapes emerged from between the trees, monstrously huge. Dean shone his torch at the tallest, hoping to blind it enough to make it pause. Bugger off with that bloody light, came a girl's voice 